talk more about um, considering that CPAP machines machines are usually associated with a poor adherence. Um, can you talk about more of the advancements um, in treatment devices specifically? So in terms of treatment devices, the, the standard treatment for obstructive sleep apnea is continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP. And that is really a device uh, that uh, is connected to tubing that's connected to a mask. And then the device delivers pressure, positive pressure to splint the airway to keep the airway open. And it delivers a, a varying amount of pressure depending upon what the patient needs. We can set the pressure according to the patient needs. Um, so that is the standard treatment. And the reason why it's standard is because it splints all aspects of the airway, uh, irrespective of where the collapse is occurring. So there are other treatment options that we use. Oral appliances or mandibular advancement devices can be used, reserved mainly for mild obstructive sleep apnea. Upper airway surgery is an option, typically one that we make to help people be able to tolerate CPAP. For example, if there's nasal obstruction, doing uh, septoplasty, um, there, there are specific surgeries for obstructive sleep apnea like uvula palatopharyngeoplasty or UPPP, and that's where the soft palate and the uvula are removed. The outcomes with it are, you know, basically a coin flip as to whether it's effective in treating the obstructive sleep apnea. So that's not something we uh, typically do. Um, there are, are newer treatment modalities that are coming to light. So uh, within the last several years, hypoglossal nerve stimulation or upper airway neurostimulation is a novel treatment for obstructive sleep apnea specifically for severe obstructive sleep apnea and those who have not been able to tolerate positive airway pressure. So this is a, a viable alternative if people are really struggling with their device and uh, they have severe sleep apnea and there are other criteria which they must meet as well uh, to uh, because we really try to uh, select the patients that we think are really going, going to most benefit from this kind of therapy. There are some patients who have certain physiology or anatomical characteristics that really don't do as well with the upper airway neurostimulation. So we really wanna make sure we're very cognizant about making sure that the particular patient that we're, we're um, seeing is going to do well with the upper airway neurostimulation. Um, you know, there are many other novel treatment strategies that are being uh, investigated, uh, different medications. There was a randomized trial published last year. It was a small study, but seemed to show some promise of certain medications uh, that work on specific receptors of the upper airway that maybe can be helpful in the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea. Um, so yeah, so those are, those are kind of that's what the forefront is right now in terms of the treatment.